CBS 17 is celebrating Black History Month. Lift every voice and sing, also known as the Black National Anthem, has been performed everywhere from presidential inaugurations to Super Bowl Sunday. As Jill Hillary reports, the song is now on the road to new recognition. Performed by a group of school children, it should come as no surprise that this beloved piece of American history is the brainchild of a teacher. In the year 1900, James Weldon Johnson wrote the poem that would eventually become one of the most recognized songs in the country. It was just one of his many accomplishments. In addition to being a poet, a principal, and a Broadway composer, Johnson was also an attorney, one of the first black lawyers admitted to the Florida bar. I believe that probably he had no idea what was going to happen to this song, this poem, he was just expressing what he felt. Dr. Carol Adams, historian, activist, and educator, says Johnson's contribution to the soundtrack of the American story can't be overlooked. It is marching orders. Remember, this is post-Reconstruction era. And so during the Reconstruction period, you even had black senators and all of that before the South got scared and said, this is going too far and started resegregating and lynching. I mean, he comes right behind that era. Mm -hmm. And that's why he says uh, to us, hey, this is continuing. This struggle is still going on. We haven't won. We've been through a lot, but it's not over. Originally scripted as part of a school celebration of Abraham Lincoln's birthday, the three-verse hymn was accompanied by music composed by James Weldon Johnson's brother, Rosamond. In 1919, during one of the most racially violent periods since the Civil War, the lyrics were given new life, again by educators. Many of the children who first learned the song went on to become teachers themselves, reviving it for a new generation. It eventually caught the ear of Booker T. Washington, ushering it to a new height when it was adopted as the official song of the NAACP. Now more than 100 years after its inception, United States Representative Jim Clyburn of South Carolina is pushing a bill to have the song recognized as a national hymn. I think what Representative Clyburn is doing is amazing in that it opens the door, it opens more doors. Let our rejoice. Sing and rise. Hearing it as a child for the first time, and I can almost remember hearing its structure and hearing it played, my big brother played also, I, even though I didn't know the context and I didn't know the history, I knew it was important by the way it was, by its treatment, by the way it was performed, by the way it was played with majesty and, and, and this greatness. Let our rejoice a few years before his death, Johnson wrote that the lines of the song repay me in elation, almost in exquisite anguish whenever I hear them sung by Negro children. As Americans of every age, faith, and race embrace the song, the anthem's call to action continues to inspire. Facing the rising. Such a powerful song. Mm -hmm. Well, we are sharing more stories on our website, cbs17.com. Just select news at the top of the homepage and click Black History Month.